With the 22-23 season wrapping up for some leagues around the world, it is officially EL season. You see what I did there? Epic dad joke. But with the window opening on March 1st to sign ELCs for the 23-24 season, we've got to start talking about who the Islanders, from within their own reserve list, could sign to ELCs beginning next year, and some that they could start bringing over just now. And so let's look at that reserve list. These are all the players currently drafted by the Islanders, but unsigned. So these are players that the Islanders own their NHL rights to, but have yet to sign to NHL contracts. And so that's a whole list of players, and they're obviously not going to bring over all of those right now. Right? As you can see here on the right-hand side, the must-sign by dates. Most of these guys, they don't need to sign till 2024, but there are some right now that they have to sign. And those two players are Christian Krieger and Jacob Pavanka. They have to sign these guys by August 15th, 2023, or they lose their NHL rights. And so are they going to sign either of those two players? So we'll talk about those two guys, and then we'll talk about some other names on this list that they're probably going to sign to ELCs in a later portion of this offseason for them, for these players, that is. So the first two guys, Christian Krieger, Jacob Ivanka. Will they sign them to ELCs? Well, let's just look at them. Christian Krieger, for example, this year had two points in 25 games. That's not a lot, right? It's dropped off significantly from last year we had 8 and 36 um of course that's 11 extra games but at the rate that he scores he's not going to put up another four points in another eight games that's just not his thing which really gets to the crux of him as a player he's not an offensive defenseman he's not going to put up a ton of points he's a defensive defenseman one of those like stay at home guys if you will his transition game is okay his skating is fine um, but it's just, he's more of an, a defensive defenseman, very much in the style of Scott Mayfield. And I, and I mean that comparison deliberately. Very much in the style of Scott Mayfield. Now, will they sign him to an ELC? I, I have a hard time believing. When you look at hockey prospecting, uh, his, his path to the NHL, if you will, isn't very high. It's 0% for a star probability over the last three years, not counting this one. And then it's dropped down to 3% in his D3 year. The, the road to the NHL is low for Christian Krieger. Doesn't mean he can't make it. It just means it's not an obvious one. Um, so I don't think they're going to sign him to an ELC per se. But I do think they're going to sign him to some form of professional contract. Likely an AHL contract, if you will. They're going to keep him within the Islanders' umbrella. Because that's just what Lou Lamorello does. You can count on one hand the number of prospects that Lou Lamorello, since coming over to the New York Islanders, has just kind of let go. As in, like, never played in any capacity for one of Worcester, Bridgeport, or the New York Islanders. And I think Christian Krieger isn't going to be another one of those names. He will play in some way, shape, or form within the New York Islanders' professional umbrella. From Christian Krieger, we go to Jacob Ivanka, who played with Omaha, Nebraska this year and had some good numbers. In 37 games, he had 10 goals and 18 points, which is way up from what he had in the last two years for uh, Notre Dame, where he had 9 and 8. He basically had his entire two years worth of production just this year alone for Omaha, Nebraska. Now, will the Islanders sign him to an entry-level contract? I think that the potential is higher for him to get an entry-level deal. This is an excellent two-way center. Uh, the offense isn't necessarily there. You can see he's already got 10 goals, which is good to see. Uh, but he's not known for his offense, clearly. Just look at his production. But what he is known for is his defensive game and his face-off abilities. This guy is absolutely elite in the face-off dot, which is an underappreciated part of the game, even by myself. Um, so... I think they might sign him to an entry-level contract just to see what's up, because they like centers, obviously, who doesn't? Um, but if he does go anywhere, I don't think it, the NHL is a guarantee for him. Again, looking at hockey prospecting, uh, it's just not as obvious, right? You can see 0% star probabilities. I, you probably could have surmised that. And 6% in his D3 year to make the NHL. And so it's not obvious that or the road to the NHL isn't obvious for Jacob Ivanka, just as it wasn't for Christian Krieger. I can see an ELC in the picture for him a little bit more than Christian Krieger, 
but it wouldn't surprise me if he also just signs an AHL deal with the Bridgeport Islanders. Again, I don't think Lou Lamorello is just going to kind of like let him walk for no reason whatsoever. Uh, Lou just doesn't do that, especially with centers. He will bring him in and try to get something for him. Now, what about the other players on that reserve list, right? There are still some that are playing. Is there anyone else on this list that the New York Islanders will probably sign at the end of their season? So let's just look at that reserve list again. Uh, Cameron Berg, probably not. They've got another two years before they have to do anything with him. Quinn Finley, they got they got time. He's, he's super young. They've got time, right? Like he's the youngest guy there within the, the reserve list at 18 years old. Don't worry. There's no rush. Isaiah George. They, they might they, they might sign Isaiah George, um, but they might just give him another year at the juniors, just kind of take another step. Uh, they don't need to rush him as a 19-year-old. They, they really don't have to rush him per se, uh, but it wouldn't surprise me so much. Keep on the list, Alex Jeffries. I really think they will sign Alex Jeffries to an entry-level contract when his season comes to an end. Now, we saw in the last video how important Alex Jeffries has been for Merrimack. He's in year three at the college level. They won't let him, or I, I don't think they're going to want him to go to the fourth year where he could potentially become a free agent. Again, when you look at that list, it's June 1st, 20, sorry, August 15th, 2024, that they have to sign Alex Jeffries. And we've seen it where these really good college players just choose to become free agents after their fourth year. So once they graduate, they could become a free agent if they haven't signed a contract with the NHL team that drafted them. And so I don't think the Islanders are going to wait for that to happen. They're going to sign him ASAP. And after this year where he had 41 points, I, I don't see a reason for them not to sign him. Going down the list, there's really two more players I think they're going to sign this year to entry-level contracts. And that's Dalen Kiefler. Thank you, Sam, for that, for the pronunciation. Dalen Kiefler, uh, overage player at the WHL level, putting up decent production. We've spoken about him before. And the same thing for Matthew Maggio, who is an overage player at the OHL level, uh, putting up insane levels of production for the Windsor Spitfires. He's also going to sign an ELC at the end of their, their respective years. But both of those guys are going or trying to get to the Memorial Cup. Kiefler is definitely going because his side is hosting it. I've done a video on that already. Uh, so I, I, I'm guaranteeing that they're going to be signing ELCs with the New York Islanders when their season ends, whenever that happens to be, probably in like the beginning of the summer type of thing. But on the rest of the list, I don't think there's anyone that is guaranteed to sign an ELC now. Now, we know the Finnish season is over. The Liga season is done. They're going into the playoffs. And neither of our Finnish prospects are going into those playoffs. So, Etoliukas for HPK, Alexi Malinen for JYP, and Matthias Rayanemi for Saipa. Neither of them are going to the playoffs. But I don't think that the honors are going to sign any one of those right now. Etoliukas, to me, is the better prospect of the three. But he's got a contract for another year with HPK. And with the stride that he's made this year, I don't think they're going to rush and sign him to a contract. They might. They, I'm not saying that they're not going to do it. They might just sign him and have him burn a year. But they, they can just wait it out type of thing. They don't have to sign him right here, right now. He made a, a big leap for HPK this year. If you look at his stats, eight, or sorry, 12 points. Sorry, 23 points. Oh my god, these ads. This is why I don't like bringing up elite prospects uh, this way, just because of all the ads. It, it's it's wild. Anyways, 23 points this year in 58 games with 14 goals. He only had 12 points last year. So, Ethel Yukas had a hell of a season this year. I think the New York Islanders are going to wait one more year to sign him because he's got that, that contract with HPK for one more year. There's no need to rush. That's our reserve list. There's... Really no one else to speak about on the reserve list in terms of signing ELCs this year. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, I suggest you do so. And if you have already, or just because you've seen this video, thank you, thank you, thank you.